All right, Kevin, this Penn State game, how do you interpret <clears throat> pluses and minuses? And, and, and you know better than anyone, you three know better than anyone, and what I've been talking about all week because people want to know and people have their opinions on how does this compare to Michigan, Penn State? So take it from there. Well, you know, I'll, I'll start this by saying, once again, the transitive property does not work in football. So you can't sit there and say what Ohio State did in State College is, you know, you can that you can draw extrapolate anything that goes to what happened to Penn State playing Michigan in Ann Arbor. And you can't you can't do the same with the Iowa game or the Michigan State game. About the only thing you can say is at least Ohio State didn't have to, you know, deal with a tunnel. Uh, one tunnel. Uh, it's you know it, it's a case of where Ohio State did what it needed to do. Ohio State had played one road game previously, Michigan State, a Michigan State team that really didn't show up in that game, a Michigan State team that is just woefully undermanned, uh, and it, it's showing you know it's showing this year. Ohio State was challenged. Ohio, I mean, you you need to have those types of games where you have to you have your you have your back against the wall and that you know how to respond to adversity. And I'm not saying that necessarily makes Ohio State better than Michigan because, you know, you're just, you just need to have those games. And we're seeing a Michigan team that's getting punished in terms of the rankings due to not having a, much of a conference schedule. But in hindsight, Ohio State's conference or non-conference schedule wasn't, wasn't all that great either. Um, I, I, don't, I don't look at this as Ohio State you know, versus Michigan by proxy in terms of what they did against Penn State because that just it's just not how anything works. So, uh, you know, I see an Ohio State team that went in, took care of business, certainly showed some issues once again in terms of, uh, you know, they need to do a better job running the ball. They need to do a better job in terms of, uh, you know, cleaning up some penalties, e even some things that I didn't necessarily know were penalties in terms of uh, Kate Stover getting dinged for a couple of false starts that obviously looked like, offside to me but apparently and ryan day explained a rule that it didn't sound like he was completely you know 100 percent down with either so um you, you know <coughs> i you know when i look when i look at this i don't look at it in terms of what michigan did to them yes michigan absolutely blew the doors off of penn state in the second half it was much more of a game in the first half uh, they just absolutely, you know, dropped the hammer on them, run, ran for four bills or whatever it was they did and, you know, led to the, uh, you know, to the early season uh, Heisman campaign of, of Blake Corum at that point. But I think what Ohio State was able to do in terms of scoring all the points that it did in a nine minute window, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is equally and differently impressive. So. I don't know. Maybe I was the wrong one to ask first because I just kind of have some mixed feelings about how things work there. Tony, go ahead if you're ready. Well, I, I was just looking at a tweet here um, regarding Ohio State's performance against Penn State and Michigan's performance against Penn State and how Michigan's performance is held up as being so much better. And the tweet here is that Ohio State had a 20-point lead with 242 left in that game. And Michigan had a 17-point lead with five minutes and four seconds left to go in the game. The difference was that Michigan added a touchdown on their end and Ohio State gave up a touchdown in garbage time on their end. And uh, somehow it looks so much better for Michigan. I would say this. Last year, Ohio State beat Michigan State by 49 points. Michigan lost to Michigan State by four points. Ohio State lost to Michigan by however many, many points – that 15. they did. And so the, tr the transitive property, if, if it actually worked, Ohio state should have beaten Michigan by, um, I don't know, like 46 points or something. And that didn't happen. So I guess math is wrong. Well, I just scribbled it down here, you know, uh, within our own personal text chain, somebody sent the tweet that Nicole Arbach, said that, you know, you got – why is Michigan three spots behind Ohio State when they throttled Penn State by 24 and Ohio State slumped by to beat them by 13? And that disavows the idea that they've also played two other common opponents, Iowa and Michigan State. And as I just jotted down all of the margins of victory, Ohio State won those three games by a combined 86 points for an average of 27 
I think, 28, 29, maybe. I don't know. I can't add or subtract. It's I was 86, told 56 59. Yeah, 86 total. to 59. 59 yep. for Michigan over those three games, an average of 19 plus. So uh, Ohio State beat those three opponents by an average of over a touchdown more than Michigan did. So I agree with Kevin. None of it matters because they're going to play each other at the end of the season. And to get wrapped around the axle about where one is and one isn't, uh, I think that's endemic of the fact that Ohio State uh, did play Notre Dame, a five and three team in the non-conference, whereas I think Michigan's three non-conference opponents probably have a combined record of three and 12 or something at this point. So, and, and none of them are power five teams. So I, and I just throw that three and 12 out there because it could be better. It could be worse, but it ain't, it ain't off by a whole lot. I mean, has anybody heard of Hawaii, Colorado state or whoever the other team, UConn beating anybody um, of note? I, I don't, I mean, maybe one, maybe, maybe they have an average of 1.5 wins between the three of them. I don't know, but you know, Ohio state gets a little bit of credit for beating Notre Dame. We're splitting hairs and, and talking about stuff that really doesn't matter in the, end all be all of the whole thing because as it was pointed out here you could start out as low as 16th and still win this thing that's what Ohio State was in the initial rankings in 2014 and they ended up uh, getting mm -hmm. in number four and winning it and uh, becoming the first number four seed to win a college football playoff <laughs> kind of cracked myself up there so um any rate uh you know a lot of football left to be played well, and the committee chair, Boo Corgan, did mention Michigan's terrible non-conference schedule, terrible being my word, as one of the reasons they are below Clemson. Because you look at Clemson, and not that they have played these non-conference games yet, but they still have Notre Dame and South Carolina to come. But Michigan's schedule, it's just you, – you can't – I think the, the committee didn't feel like rewarding them for that. Not that uh, Alabama has a – you know, I guess the Texas game stands in there. But – um yeah, they just there's no need to reward Michigan for that right now when you can reward them later on for beating Ohio State and Illinois, even though well, by the yeah, you, you make a really good point there. I think Illinois will cancel out Notre Dame for Ohio State because if we were trying to compare mm -hmm. the two resumes, because Ohio State's not going to play a crossover opponent as good as Illinois. So, you know, if if you just and this is my thing on Notre Dame, I've always said this people, well, they don't play a conference championship game. Look. Their 1 through 12 is as good as anybody else's 1 through 12. They just don't have, you know, 13. So, um, you know, I mean, you know, Ohio State's 13 is Arkansas State or uh, Northwestern, you know. Uh, just excise that and just look at Ohio State's top 12, including a conference championship game. It's probably going to be pretty comparable to whatever Notre Dame plays 1 through 12. Well, I think and the same thing applies in this case with Michigan. I, I think this underlines Steve's point, and Steve, you can correct me if, if this is not what I got out of what you said, but I totally agree with the strength of schedule. There's a number of fallacies in the strength of schedule, and one is that beating the 80th best team in the country versus beating the 115th best team in the country, who cares? If you're one of the top three or four teams in the country – you should smoke both of them by 35 to 50 points. So what does it matter that you're playing UAB, who's the 90th best team in the country, or you're playing Connecticut, who's 125? At that level, yeah. it doesn't really matter. What might be interesting is I posted a video, folks, if you want to check it out. I compared the numbers for Ohio State against Penn State, Iowa, and Michigan State. And I won't go through it here because there's a video, but I'll cut to the chase of the bottom line. If we believe in yards per play, Against those three, Ohio State's at 7.35 and Michigan's at 5.98. So that's about a yard and a half better. And what might be surprising against those three is Ohio State has actually played better defense yards per play against Penn State, Michigan State, and Iowa than Michigan has. And has a plus eight versus a negative one in turnover margin. And that can be calculated. You know, there's different perspective on that. That's randomness. Ohio State's been lucky. Da, 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 that you can't depend on that. Or there are teams that have explosive guys like um, the guy with the, the JTT. Yeah, that guy. Like yeah. guys like that that are difference makers that can actually make plays, Kevin. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. No, I mean, that was one of those types of outings that 
you're just going to think back on in 15 years and be like, wow, I can't believe I saw that. And, you know, well, whatever the new, the new format of media is at that point, you know, have it like beamed right into my brain or something so I can go back and relive it and, and tell everybody, yeah, I was there and I saw him do all of these things. But, you know, we get, we get so lost in the minutia of this number and that number and everything else. It'll all sort itself out when that, you know, November 26th or whatever it is, when these two teams play, you know, obviously both sides are popping off pretty loud in terms of their fans about, you know, this is what Ohio state's going to do. This is what Michigan's going to do. But you know, there are, there are, there certainly are a level of truthers out there that for whatever reason, just don't want to give Ohio state any credit for anything who are going to have this, this view that why is Ohio state ranked where it is? And you know what? It's, it's part of what makes this what it is. You I mean, I, if I go to a sports bar tomorrow night or something and get into a conversation about Ohio state, I'm sure there'll be somebody in there that just generally is that feels that Ohio state's ranked too high or whatever. And, you know, I'll, I'll probably use some of those, con- those numbers. You may have to email them to me. So I, I may have to use some of those numbers in terms of the conversation. Not that I have to be the arbiter of all things, Ohio state, but I think I picked a, I, pe- I picked a career path that has made me the arbiter of all things, Ohio state, whenever I'm out amongst, uh, friends or whatnot so uh you know we'll, we'll see mark i think those those turnover numbers also have uh decreased ohio state's yards per play because if they had a larger field those numbers would be higher and, and we saw that against iowa where they just that that affected what they wanted to do and wanted affected the deep shots that they wanted to take because there was no deep field to to do that with so you take some of those turnovers away and that the offense is going to look even more impressive. 